Hello and welcome back to Probability Theory. And first, as always, I want to thank all the nice people that support this channel on Steady or PayPal. Now in today's part 4 we will talk about the binomial distribution. It's a fundamental probability measure which occurs a lot in discrete models. For example, we have it when we flip a coin. Then we would say we only have two possible outcomes, heads or tails. Now if we don't have a fair coin but a biased coin, we use the letter P for the probability of heads. For the sake of this video, let's assume that P is a rational number between 0 and 1. This makes everything simpler because we can write P as a fraction. For example, we could write it as A divided by A plus B. Of course, here A and B are natural numbers including 0. For example, if we have a fair coin, so a normal coin, the probability P should be 1 half. This means that we can choose both A and B to be 1. If we have this, we can see the whole random experiment in a different light. More concretely, this is what we usually call an urn model. Now, such an urn is just a container where we can put in different kinds of bolts. In our case here, we take green bolts for heads and red bolts for tails. Indeed, the number of bolts should be A in the case of heads and B in the case of tails. Hence here our random experiment is that one ball is drawn randomly from the jar. And then the probability for getting a queen heads ball is again our p. It's simply the ratio of the number of queen balls to the number of all balls in the urn. Therefore in both cases we have the same probability measure. Here the sample space omega is simply the set with two elements. We call them H and T in this case, but of course the names are not so important here. Often you also see 0 and 1 for the two elements. Here we have a discrete case, therefore the probability measure can be defined with a probability mass function. Or in other words, we just have to say what is the probability for the single outcomes. For heads we have A divided by A plus B and for tails we have B divided by A plus B. And then you see, they add up to 1 as they should. Therefore, usually we just call the one probability here p and the other one 1 minus p. Ok, by knowing all this, we now can start talking about the binomial distribution. Here we don't have a single coin toss, but now we do it n times. Hence, after n tosses, we just count the number of heads. And importantly, we are not interested in which order heads and tails occurred. Now you already know, equivalently we could also describe this with n urns. We just draw one ball from each urn and then we count the heads as well. Of course this would be a little bit wasteful because we don't need so many urns for this. We just take one urn and then we draw n balls with replacement. This means that we draw the first ball, note it and then we put the ball back into the jar. Therefore, for the second draw, we still have the same ratio of balls inside the urn. So in summary, there are three things for the binomial distribution you should remember. The sample size is n, it's unordered and with replacement. Now, because we are just interested in the number of heads, you already know the corresponding sample space. The minimal case would be that we only have zero heads. And then of course, the maximum would be n. Now as before, this is a discrete model, hence the probability measure can be given with a probability mass function. So it's sufficient to define what the probability of k hats is. Ok, maybe I first give you the definition and then we talk about why this makes sense. So here we have the binomial n choose k, then we have p to the power k times 1 minus p to the power n minus k. Now what you should see immediately is that for the binomial distribution we have exactly two parameters, the size n and the probability p. Now please recall, p was the probability for just one coin toss. And with this knowledge we now can explain this formula here. Ok, let's visualize all the coin tosses with a tree. So for the first coin toss we have the probability p to get heads and 1 minus p to get tails. And then of course we get the same picture for the second coin toss. Of course this then just repeats until we reach the nth level. Ok, now for the probability pk here, we need to go through all the possibilities where we hit exactly k hats. 
For example, if we want to hit two heads, we can go through here, then we hit this one, then we go to this one, but then we have to hit tails. Therefore, for the probability of this root, we have p times p times 1 minus p. In other words, the power of p gives us the number of heads we hit, and the power for 1 minus p gives us the number of tails we hit. However, you already see there are more possibilities to hit exactly two heads. For example, this root here gives us exactly two heads with the same probability as this one. Also on the right hand side we find this root here. Hence, we have to multiply the probability here with 3 or with 3 choose 2. In fact, it's a very good exercise to show that the number of possible ways is exactly given by n choose k. In summary, this picture now explains why the definition of the probability measure for the binomial distribution makes sense. Also, I can tell you there are a lot of different notations you can find for this probability measure. For example, some people write b with the two parameters n and p. Also a little bit longer you will also find b i n. However, no matter which notation is used, you always should know what is the definition of the mass function and what is the meaning of n and p. If you forget it, maybe our programming language R can help you. Therefore, in the next step, let's open R Studio. So here you see the nice four windows again. And we can immediately go to the console and ask R about the binomial distribution. Therefore, we type question mark R binome enter and here we see the help function. It tells you a little bit about the binomial distribution, for example its interpretation and also shows you some commands to use it in R. We will just use the R binome command here where the arguments are explained afterwards. Most importantly you should check that size is really our n from before and this prop is our p from before. Of course this is what you will find here. So you see, number of trials and probability of success on each trial. Now if we go further, you also see that the probability mass function is also included here. And there you see, they also use n and p as we did. The only difference is that they use the letter x where we used the letter k before. Ok, with this you should see, it's very nice that we have the manual of probability theory included in R. Ok, then let's use the command as we had it in the picture. So let's type r binome 1, then the size 3 and maybe the probability 1 half. Now this means we do the random experiment and get a number of heads. So you see, in this case we only got one head. Therefore I would say let's do it again. Now we got two heads corresponding to our picture from before. Of course we can do it again and again and maybe we get different results. Now here 0 would be the lowest number that can come out and 3 would be the largest one. Ok, at this point we can talk about this number 1 here. Indeed what we did manually before we can tell R with this number. So you see when I put in 10 we get out 10 results. So we tell R, please repeat the random experiment 10 times. So you see, without much work, without flipping all the coins, we immediately get all the results we want. For example, if we want 100, that's no problem at all. Now if we want to visualize this, we can use the histogram command. So let's simply put the R binom command into the histogram command. And then we get immediately this nice picture. Obviously, since we only have four possible outcomes, we don't see so much here. However, we already see that 0 or 3 as an outcome is very unlikely. Therefore, maybe we can look what happens when we increase the size of our random experiment. So this is our n in the formula, so we flip more coins. So let's increase it to 30. Then we hit enter and you see the new histogram. Also here we see the outcomes in the middle are much more probable than the outcomes in the extrema. Ok, then for our next step I would say let's put our urn into R. Here please remember we had two numbers for our urn. A number A and a number B for heads and tails respectively. So let's try to put that into R Studio. 
For this, let's use the script in the top left corner. Hence, let's choose a number for A, for example 5, and let's add a comment with the number sign. So for us, this is the number of heads in the urn. Then let's do the same with a number B, for example, let's choose 7. And then number of tails in the urn. Now because it's easier to calculate with numbers, let's say that heads is represented by 1s and tails represented by zeros. Okay, now I can tell you, if you push Ctrl, Alt and R, we run the whole script. So you see, everything here is in the console and the values are saved. Okay, now you know we want to define an urn with zeros and ones. You already know we can put numbers together with the C command here. In this case you see we have an urn where we have the one ball ones and the zero ball also ones. Of course, that's not what we want, we want more balls in it. Then we would have to type something like this. Here you see we have 12 bolts in it with the correct ratio. Obviously this is not what we want to do because then we can't change the numbers a and b here at the beginning. Indeed we will use the replicate command. So we write earn is equal to rep. Then we put in the different kinds of bolts we want. So in this case 1 and 0. Then a comma and then how many of them we want. So in this case simply a and b. So let's run the script and see what happens. And there you see, this is exactly the urn from before, the urn we wanted. And of course, you can check if we change the numbers here, the urn will change as well. Okay, then let's go back to the command window and take a sample from the urn. So with this command, we take one ball out. Now this was one, but of course we can repeat it. Okay, so that's very nice, it's working, but maybe now let's take 10 balls out of the urn. Okay, there you see, this is now our sample. Maybe let's do it again and you see, we can do it again and again. And there you should see, the number of ones is always 3. However, that's not what we want here in our example, because it means we take bolts out of the urn, but without replacement. You can check that here, because it would mean the urn would be empty after 10 bolts, so 11 won't work. And indeed, this is what R tells us. Hence the solution is that we have to add the replacement argument here. So we would write replace is true. Okay, so let's check what comes out as a sample as we want it. So maybe let's do it again to check how many ones we can have. Okay, at this point you should see it's working. So now please recall our random experiment. We are not interested in the overall order here, but only how many ones we got. Therefore, the natural question would be, how can we count them easily in R? Now maybe you already see it, we can count the ones if we just sum up all the numbers involved here. And the correct command in R for this is simply sum. So let's put the sample inside and let's see what comes out. In this case it's zero, so let's do it again. So we see, it's working like a charm. So I would say, let's copy that in our script here but let's replace 11 with n. Then this n is indeed the same we had in our binomial distribution. With this our script is working, because each time we run it, we get a number of heads out. And as before, we can do it again and again to get different numbers out. Therefore, maybe for you, a natural question would be, can we repeat the experiment m times? Maybe in the case that m is 1000. And of course, also in this case, R comes with a nice replicate function. We just put the command replicate in front of the thing we want to replicate, and before we put the number of times we want to replicate it. So simply close the parentheses and then we are finished. So let's run it to see what comes out. And there you see, we have 1000 numbers for our random experiment. Now to make our life a little bit easier, let's give this list a name. So let's call it observations. And then in the next step I would say, let's visualize this list in a histogram. And this command you already know, it's just hist. Okay, when we run the script now, we should see the histogram of observations. Maybe let's run it again to see how much changes. Now by using these two arrows here, you can see we don't have so many differences at all. 
For the end now, the last question we can answer is, how does this compare to the binomial distribution in R? So let's do the histogram of R binom. And here we have to put in m, n, and then p. And here in our case, p is 3 divided by 10. So let's put that in here. And then let's see what the histogram looks like. Indeed, we see we have a similar distribution. Of course, this is what we expected after this long video about the binomial distribution. So with this, I think it's enough for today. See you in the next video. Have a nice day. Bye.